Good evening and welcome to the Town of Auburn Planning Board meeting of Tuesday, April 12, 2016, now called to order at approximately 7.03 p.m. This meeting is being recorded and broadcast by local access programming. Is there anyone here in the audience that's recording tonight's meeting? Okay. There being none, please rise and join us in a salute to the flag. <coughs> Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This time I'd like to remind the audience, applicants, town administration, and each of the planning board members to please refrain from asking questions in regards to all matters discussed this evening without first being granted my consent. The first item on our agenda this evening is an ANR for 25 Walsh Avenue. <coughs> Anyone here for the ANR 25 Walsh? Yeah. Uh, Wayne LeBlanc, I represent the uh, abutter who intends to acquire the property. Please, have a seat. Can I ask any questions? Yep, okay. Uh, yes, uh, I represent James and Arlene Pichy. They're the owners of the property at 27 Walsh Avenue. Um, Mr. Pichy's sister and brother-in-law are the owners of the property next door, which is 25 Walsh Avenue. The um, property at 25 Walsh Avenue, there's been an issue and questions, as you can see, regarding the, uh, the driveway and some other uh, appurtenances to the, um, to the residential home that have been there for many years. The parties have resolved their differences by suggesting that they divide out the piece of property to include now the paved driveway, which really belongs with 27 Walsh Avenue, a portion of the deck, which has been there for many years, and then the portion of the shed, which you can see at the end of the paved driveway. So this proposal is in order to essentially resolve uh, any problems with encroachment, which 27 had onto 25. And um, as a result of that, I do not represent um, Paula Pichy and uh, Mr. Weatherby, but I've been involved with their attorney, and this is a proposal that we suggested in order to resolve the problem between the parties. So essentially, parcel A of about 4,338 square feet would be joined, if the board approves this plan, would be joined with uh, my client's property at 27 Walsh Avenue, deducting that from 25 Walsh Avenue. Yes, uh, through the chair, I had a chance to review the plan of the initial application. Uh, there were a couple of minor changes that needed to be made, which I uh, addressed uh, with the applicant. These changes have been made, plans are <coughs> delivered to us today, and I verified that those changes are, are reflected on these revised editions that are before us today. It was just minor uh, little things, just the description of the ownership of each parcel just needed to be consistent with both parcels, and that the front edition dimensions for both lots needed to be shown. And it appears that both those changes and modifications have been made, and I believe this is a accurate representation of an a &R plan for the board. Okay. Mr. Rothra, do you have any, anything you'd like to? No. <coughs> Defer to uh, Matt as far as legalities. Okay. Mr. Koski, any questions? I didn't hear the whole presentation. Mm -hmm. Mr. Weaver, mm -hmm. Mr. Brooks. Just that little slip is being transferred to the other one, so that's correct. It more mm -hmm. Yep. Fine. We'll entertain a motion. I'll make that motion that we approve. Of course. Okay. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All set. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, should have us mylar in the top before you before you leave. Okay. I'm just going to sign it now. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs>
Five applicant Marie T. Baker requesting a special permit for a hammerhead lot under section 5.3.2 of the Auburn Zoning Bylaws for the construction of a single family dwelling at 310 Lester Street. Yeah. Thank you. Um, just for the record, of one of the absent members for your original opening of this hearing, Mr. Rothra, has uh, read the or watch the film for the previous meeting and is now eligible to vote tonight, courtesy of the Mullen Rule. So you'll have uh, five members voting on the application. Thank you. I'm uh, Patrick Burke, civil engineer for HSNT Group, uh, representing the applicant. Uh, came in with the uh, Hammerhead lot off of Lincoln <coughs> Street. And there was a question about the wheel drive We've engaged uh, Attorney George Caritzi, and he's written a letter uh, with evidence that it is a private drive that was in existence before 1956 when the subdivision control law took effect. Brought copies of the letter to look at tonight. Uh, what we'd like to do, if we can agree that uh, with the evidence in the letter that this is a private drive, uh, we would proceed with an a &R, uh, plan uh, with real drive being uh, private way. Uh, oh, so this isn't the shared control. drive. This is a. This, this is. A, it's. It was a common drive before, where we were considering it, but Attorney Critzi looked at it, and he believes it's a private drive now. There's evidence in the letter because uh, it was a private way uh, mapped uh, before 1956. <coughs> It's, know, we, we just yeah. got this today. No, we yeah. okay. don't expect the decision tonight. We can yeah. look it over. Okay. Why don't you go ahead and. That's that. What's what Attorney Critzi uh, did with his uh, discovery? Uh, it was a private uh, drive, private way in the town before prior to 1956 when the uh, Sub Subdivision Control Act took place, uh, which means it's. Uh, would allow frontage to be off the lot, and it would not be, uh, as long as it's a passable way, it's not subject to a subdivision control law for the way. So what we would like to do, if we can agree that it's a private way, uh, based on this letter, we don't have to do that tonight, if you can look it over, uh, we would withdraw the Hammerhead special permit and uh, move forward with an A&R. So the chair, would the applicant be amenable to a continuous request to give us time to review Absolutely. this? Absolutely. Yeah. Contain a motion to continue the hearing in two, <coughs> two weeks? So. Sure. Uh, furthermore, sorry, uh, nope. furthermore uh, just, I would like to have this reviewed by town council. So mm -hmm. I'm, here. <laughs> I'm not going to review this one on my own. So sure. I would recommend the town council to make the review. Okay. You need extra time for that, Matt? Mm -hmm. More than two weeks. I think continuing it to the next meeting would be sufficient. And if we need more time, I could keep the applicant informed. If we need us to meet with town council, so we can do that. Okay. I'll make that motion. Second. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, applicant Jimmy George's trustee requesting a special permit for a Hammerhead lot under section 5.3.2 of the Auburn Zoning Bylaw for the proposed construction of a single family dwelling on property located at 12 William Street in Auburn. Yeah, 
Again, Patrick Burke, Frank Justin Key Group, our uh, plan of the applicant. Uh, we have presented the plan, the Hammerhead lot, off of William Street, uh, cutting the lot up, to the house coming in the back. We addressed uh, most of the comments from the DCG hearing, uh, expanded the width of the driveway. Uh, we provided from the last uh, meeting, people were concerned, the abutters, about uh, lighting, you know, possibly those cars coming out, and uh, screening on the sides. We provided our right fencing along both sides, this side here this side uh, to address those comments. Uh, we've got a drainage swale in the back on this side of the property that extends, that uh, keeps the drainage uh, pattern keeping towards the back. I've also got rooftop runoff going into the Caltex subsurface infiltration system in the back to uh, relieve the uh, impact of the uh, previous areas. How is that going to affect that home that's in the back of it, down at the bottom of the hill, if that's draining back towards their property? It should not. It, it's buried enough where there should, it shouldn't be breakout in the back. It's not steep enough slope. So it meets the master water standards for uh, the breakout. The side screening, what is it? Arborites. Um, I appreciate you staking the site. Took another drive out there now that that's been staked. Um, I, I, just, I just have a concern. I recognize that this may meet all of the um, required boundaries as far as the regulations go. But I believe one of those things is also a um, judgment decision as to whether or not this is consistent with the neighborhood. And when I go down that street, there's not anything else on that side of the road that would be in that location behind the house. Um, it just doesn't seem to me to really fit the character of the neighborhood. So I'd be curious as to what <coughs> the other members of the board felt and also what members of the uh, audience may want to admit. The, I have to agree. I, I walked the property too after it was staked, and um, I just, it doesn't seem to keep in character with that, with that neighborhood. And I, I, I just can't imagine how it's going to affect that house down the back of it either. I mean, there's a water issue there, as it is in that area, and I don't know if it would be. I do be a little disturbed by this. Uh, you'll, you'll get your opportunity. We could put another swale in the back too, diverting the water away from that house in the back of the property too. <coughs> Mr. Rothbaum. I have no comments yet. Mr. Klosky? No, they took care of that well that was abandoned, right? Yes, we're going to get rid of that one too. Mr. Brooks, did you have something you wanted to share? I have that same concern that it's not, it's just dropping it right in somebody's backyard. I mean, mm. It's not consistent. Mm. What map, what is the exact? One of the eight. Uh, through the chair, the special permit findings, section 9351, said to the degree to which the activity site plan and building design are consistent with surrounding development. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you wish to take an opportunity to hear from some of the people in the audience? I'm sure, you had your hand up. Could you please stand up and, and tell us your name? <coughs> yeah, my name is Steve Pauline, I live at number 12 William Street. I'm uh, to the right, excuse me, number 10 William Street. Um, the concerns were with the size of the, the ranch house that I have there and the size of the property. This is uh, definitely an encroachment on, you know, on what we consider to be our, you know, little haven away from uh, city life. It looks like it's just going to be, uh, it's going to definitely alter the way our, our life is going to be, uh, be able to procreate it through this point because of its, uh, you know, we, we all don't, we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know who's going to be there or what. Um, We, the concerns with it now, I mean, you can, you can put a ball of water fencing you want. The, first of all, the, we talked about um, putting up the border on the, uh, the east side uh, with uh, abravides and stuff. I, I, I thank you for putting, you know, for, for at least showing that there are some, but it doesn't go back far enough. I don't know if they could ever go back far enough. Um, it's, it's definitely taking a neighborhood that's, you know, um, with single dwellings and, and turning it into a more of a condo type 
thing we want to see the field. It's not a happy thing. I, I, I'm not trying to stop progress, and I understand things are there, but uh, mm -hmm. it's definitely not what we expect. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. Sir? My name is Marco Pachera. I'm at 16 William Street, the house directly to the left. Um, and I share the same concerns as, as my neighbors here, um, but particularly where the topography is on where the projected driveway would be is, I'm in a, and if you went down, you know there's a ton of ledge. You can see it from the road, mm -hmm. and it's quite a bit raised. It dips right into my property. I already have water, some, you know, barely manageable water in the basement. I'm very concerned about what, what it would do to, to tap into that ledge, the flow of the water, tapping into those veins, what it's going to do to my basement. Uh, I'm very, very concerned about that. I appreciate the, you know, the, the, the efforts here, but I just don't think you can, you can address my concerns in any, in any way here because that driveway is right on ledge. That whole, that whole driveway is ledge. Um, the trees there don't grow big because they, don't, they can't grow, grow deep enough. They all topple over because of that ledge. Um, so anyway, that's, that's my main concern. Also, uh, I want to make sure that, you know, if this does push through that anything can be done all around the, the shrubbery of four seasons, sucking up as much water as possible. You know, my kids have the little playground off to the side, the basement's getting wet, anything that we can do to sort of absorb the water that's going to be disturbed with that kind of a property. Um, anyway, so I appreciate, I appreciate you guys going down there and looking at it, making sure you understand what the neighborhood is like, what the topography is like. I appreciate that. Thank you. Anyone else like to say anything? Okay. Jonathan? Um, I guess I'd just be curious if Matt maybe could give a little more understanding of kind of what is our prerogative here, I guess. I, you know, I, just, I, I look at a lot of the other hammerhead bots that we reviewed, and I feel like they were um, <coughs> larger sites. They the area was potentially a little bit more receptive to it. There was a little bit more um, shielding or buffering amongst the other houses. I mean, I think in this case, he's basically in, in one guy's backyard and, and staring at another one. Um, I'm just curious as to, to what is the board's purview here. Well, the board doesn't necessarily have to disclose its purview during the open hearing. You okay. have, at the once the hearing was presumably gets closed, you have 90 days to render a decision and discussions don't have to necessarily take place regarding the board's purview at this time, although you can. Uh, my, my opinion for that matter, I think it's, it's something to consider instead of just a... a it needs some further thought yeah. and discussion. <coughs> <coughs> Jonathan, just this? confused as to. So are you are you suggesting we do like a legal review, or to should we? I'm just not really clear as to what you're. Sure, it, I'd, I'd be curious to hear the board's vote before I kind of make my okay. recommendation. So, uh, that being said, it may be if you're leaning in one direction, you may want to ask the applicant if they wish to provide additional information at a future hearing before you decide. Towards the vote. Okay. Is there any further information from the public or the yeah, okay. Did you want to say something else? Uh, yes. I, I, well, my initial uh, impression is we're not in favor of the project to begin with. But if, in fact, it was, it was to uh, proceed, whether or not it does or not, uh, the gentleman that, that's uh, heading off, uh, heading the renovation of the existing property there, um, I would prefer, I, I would really appreciate it uh, if the board could do something in regards to um, hours of work, hours of deliveries. That's the biggest thing. You can say work can't start till 9 o'clock in the morning, but they're coming at 6.21 a.m. to drop off a dumpster. You know, the companies. I understand they, they deliver, but they can go to resident, they can do commercial properties first and then go to residentials. Mm -hmm. uh, people bringing trailers into the area, uh, noise and so forth. We all, most of us have dogs on the street. Um, one noise, you know, from someone that's not in the neighborhood. Sets them all off. It's a chain reaction. And it's very upsetting. At 621, I have the picture of it. 
but the dumpster being brought into the driveway. Mm -hmm. So hours of uh, construction and hours of delivery are very, very critical. I mean, if, if I'd appreciate it if it, if it could be taken into effect. Certainly. Thank you. Take into consideration. Did you want to add something? Yeah, I, I, I want to share the same concerns. I'm from uh, 11 Williams Street, Auburn. My name's Tom Riley. Uh, same concerns as Steve. Uh, and the other thing, too, is uh, we're building another. Some of you folks have been up there. There's a lot of houses real close. And oddly enough, in that section of Auburn, we're all in well water. It's not town water. So now we're going to add another house and another well to an existing aquifer. And, you know, I don't. I mean, you, you, we're talking about drainage, and that always has an impact. And oddly enough, I can I can be lower than in some of these some of my neighbors, and they'll have water before I will. It's all ledge up there. Anytime you disrupt something up there, you're going to disrupt until you do it. You don't know what you're doing. I mean, it's just going to happen, and it, so you, you run the risk of further problems. And, and like I said, I don't. You know, we've got. A, well, what, what are we on? One acre, two acre lots at the most, maybe if not even that. One, I think under an acre. Under an acre, under all of us. So, you know, it just, you know, you're putting another well in another small area of water, mm -hmm. and we've already added two houses, one of which is on town water, but the other one is on well water. The two, the, the new ones that the, the two at the new very ones. end, those the are both. The one closest to Oxford Street, they're on town water. The one. The next one up is on well water. They're mm -hmm. in the same aquifer. And now we're going to put another one in the same aquifer. And I don't know how what impact that's going to have on us, but okay. during drought years, that may be an issue. Thank you. Anybody else? Else? The fact that it's a Hammerhead lot and not an A&R lot allows us to review some of these other issues that are on defined within the bylaw. And, uh, that's where it comes into the effect that it's, it's like you said, it's there's a lot bigger lots and different lots. This is like dead square in the backyard of of another person that's going to look. And you you just, I mean, it's a major effect on the lives of the people that live around there and already have been established. I mean, it's you know it's like <coughs> dropping that other house right. In, no one's expecting to see that house and. Uh, it is allowed, but it, if all the criteria are met. Is that a, a picture of, yeah. there it is, Lime Street right there. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're right yeah. Right up here. So we, we thought it would fit in well because the condo was in the back. It wasn't buffered in another residential neighborhood. So we were coming off the back here, I said it in the back offset from the other houses, 10 in line with 218 here. And we also uh, are... In line with 218, but 218's frontage is on Oxford right. Street North. Yeah, no. And That's a stretch. Madam Chair. And, yes, um, and ha having been on the street, I think the, the separation between this street and the condo complex in the back is, is pretty pronounced. I mean, you, you wouldn't you wouldn't see that experience mm. that from William Street. Um, I think we should take a vote up or down. Yeah. I think we should at a minimum. Um, I think Matt made a good suggestion. We close the hearing and gives us an up, up further opportunity to. Uh, discuss before we uh, make a ruling. Matt? Uh, furthermore, I, I think it would be wise to offer the applicant an opportunity to either request the close or request a continuance mm -hmm. if they. Hmm. Yeah, we're uh, we're amenable to make uh, pushes around the outside any kind of thing to uh, pizza the butters to additional mm -hmm. pushes mm -hmm. on the outside. We, we feel that the drainage is working, uh, the driveway coming in pretty much stays. The delay of the land as it is doesn't disturb it. Uh, we put the swale on the side. So you're not going to have to blast any ledge to get that driveway in there. I, if we do, it won't be substantial amount. It's it's maybe just for the base coast where we came in and followed the uh, the pretty much the topography of the site with it. But like the a ledge foot or comes two. up off the road four or five feet anyway. Yep, that that little area. 
mm -hmm. it wouldn't be like a major. And it doesn't go back any further. <coughs> it's, all, it's just what you see there. At the <coughs> I'm not sure until we, we dig it out. Until you get into it. We, we didn't, we're not cutting in like five or six feet. We're cutting down maybe a foot or two. And how long is that driveway supposed to be and go, in the back, go into the backyard? It's about What's 120 feet. Um, I, I don't know that my opinion is going to change that much with, with more deliberation on it, but I might offer a motion to deny the permit if that's my, uh, appropriate. The chair, I you can close the hearing first. Hearing and hearing and that's why I was uh, through the chair. Uh, if the applicant wishes to continue or is looking to push for a vote this evening or push okay. to close under time constraints. So I guess that's a question for the applicant. I'm not sure there's too much more I can do with a lot. I think this is about what we could do to appease everybody. I was going to ask you that. Mm -hmm. What could you do to the lot to make it more satisfying than what you've already done? No, but we've looked and it at, doesn't look like... We've looked at putting the houses similar to what's in the neighborhood back there, uh, screening the outside, uh, providing mm -hmm. the drainage, sticking with the lay of the land for the most part. I don't think I'm gonna. I, I don't think my uh, vote on this is gonna change any with the review either. Only because I, I'm only saying this because of the fact that it doesn't look like there's anything more that he can do than he's already done to make it work, and it doesn't really look like it's working. Especially if you've got to go with a pounder into that into that ledge to get that ledge out of there. What they usually do is they put a, a pounder on a uh, excavator. Rather, th that that's an option rather than blasting. Yeah, we'd hammer it out yeah. mostly. Hammer it out. And uh, that's going to open up all kinds of cracks. Let me tell you, you're going to create other water problems with that. I know because my whole place is on a ledge. But, but anyway, that's my opinion. Okay. What would you like to do? I think we should close the hearing. Close the hearing. Close the hearing. I'll entertain the motion to close the hearing. I'll make that motion. Second. Any further discussion? <coughs> Those in favor? Aye. Uh, <coughs> Any opposed? Okay. Madam Chair, may, mm -hmm. I, uh, may I recommend that we table a discussion on the vote to the end of the meeting? Sure. Continue with the rest of the agenda. Okay. For our bylaws, we have 90 days to render a decision after the closing. You hearing. want to wait until the uh, just the end of this meeting, mm -hmm. correct? Yes, okay. please. Yeah. There we go. Just to present the information to get the other public hearings out. Okay. <coughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Right. We're going to move on to the Selco Partnership DBA Verizon Wireless. Requesting a special permit for personal wireless service facility utility pool attachment under section 9.3.11 of the Auburn Zoning Bylaws on property located on South Street. Good evening, board members. My name is Chris Winiarski. I'm an attorney for Verizon Wireless. So we're here tonight on a continuation from last month's hearing where we made a proposal, um, answered some questions. And I think we're essentially here tonight just to uh, have more board members to maybe get a more accurate vote in terms of the consensus of maybe what the community would like to see. Um, I can certainly answer any additional questions that anyone may have or if there's any members who uh, didn't have the benefit of my presentation and only read, uh, watched the video or, or read the application, I'm happy to answer any questions they have. Mr. Rotha. No, I, I watched the last meeting again, and I also read all the uh, data on the uh, on the, uh, the antennas. The only fight fights you can win, and uh, I can't see how we can stop this. Mr. Koski? I think it's an improvement. We're not going to have cell towers all over the town. We're going to have cans on poles once in a while. I'm That's the idea. To see that. Mr. Weaver? I would agree. Mr. Brooks, any further? I think I stated last time. Okay. Okay. All right. Jason? Okay. Matt? Just 
Go ahead, uh, through the chair, I'd uncovered some information from the FCC's uh, report in order of 2014, just regarding what we can regulate as a board versus the federal and state laws, one of the things, and it's very specific on the 155-page document, but these different kinds of uh, amendments to the 1996 Telecommunications Act, and one of them is very specific to reference <coughs> these small cells uh, on uh, co-located on utility on utility poles, existing utility poles within the right of ways, and it gives us the ability to <coughs> review a handful of things, and I'll just review them for the sake of the meeting. <coughs> there. Uh, one of the things is to make sure there's not a substantial increase in size if it exceeds the height of supporting structures, and neither of these exceed the height because of the adjustment we made to put right. pose one of them on the side of the pole. <coughs> and another is the deployment has involved the installation of more than four new equipment cabinets on each, and this is one per each, so that doesn't apply. Uh, to add an appurtenance to the body of structure that protrude from the edge of the structure more than 20 feet. And I believe there was, I think you had some dimensions on this, I don't believe it's 20 well, feet. It's not even close. I mean, <laughs> yeah. it's 15 inches in diameter, I figure a couple of extra inches for a right. mounting bracket, so uh, okay. less than two feet. And the fourth item was uh, involving excavation outside of the current site, and this is, uh, there's no excavation proposed. No excavation. And furthermore, um, this discussion came up previously regarding uh, RF emissions and such. If the, the board couldn't um, uh, issue a denial based on those, so it's not something that the, the local commission can review. But if, if they wanted to, on a, on a, as a condition of approval, or a request that the applicant comply with FCC regulations for all RF emissions, that's as far as that can go. <coughs> Are we looking for a vote now or what? I was here for the last meeting, Mr. Brooks. I think um, I, I, I appreciate the comment that he made. Um, you've got one carrier here right now that wants to put those up on the tower or up on the telephone poles. So when Boost, AT&T, you know, all the rest of them want to do it, how is that going to be regulated? So instead of having Towers that are going to, you know, ruin the landscape or whatever, or take up all that. Now you're going to have these. You're going to have clusters, as Mr. Brooks had said. So, are you going to regulate it as? Um, okay, so you're going to be able to put we'll put a Verizon one on that. So will they will they be able to uh, host all the other carriers also, or is that going to be will it be another fight? But here's a I hadn't got through the entire document, but I did catch on to something about that regarding competitive, the competitive nature of this, and those are regulated through the FCC also. It's, um, it's federal. Yeah, and there's a capacity requirement. I don't think it's the four that I mentioned earlier, but there is also a capacity for each structure. Uh, and I defer to the applicant. Possibly yeah, uh, you know, there's, there's no way to stop anyone else from proposing to do the same thing. Um, when you look at the big picture, the, the demand for the service that we sell and provide is huge. It's something everybody wants and just about everybody uses right now to a great extent, and the demand is growing every single day. So it really becomes an issue of, you know, how do we meet that demand? Um, we, it's not magic. We, the, the mobile devices that everyone has in their pocket do not work without some sort of base station or structure to create that network with antennas. This is leaps and bounds ahead of what we were doing two years ago. Uh, it's so much better. You know, to say that it would be a bad thing to have every carrier doing it this way um, seems contradictory to me. It would be a good thing. It, it would be what I, I think we should want. Um, this is very unobtrusive. It doesn't really affect the landscape at all. Um, I don't think you would notice these. And the technology changes so quickly that likely something better will be coming down the pipe. Mr. Brooks, you had something that you wanted to add? Yeah. <coughs> you represent Verizon Wireless. Verizon. So uh, you're saying that because you're going to be allowed to put these up, you will no longer require antennas and anything else? 
No, we, we still need the existing facilities, as I explained before. No, I'm not talking about existing, additional. You won't be looking to put additional antennas for Verizon anywhere when you're allowed to put these boosters up. No, that's not true at all. As I explained before, what these do is meet a specific demand in a very dense area. So this can be used um, instead of a tower in certain situations. It, this is not the cure for everything. Because I think the people, some people are misunderstanding that it, once you allow these, you don't have towers going up anymore. This is an alternative for towers for this particular problem. Uh, I can't tell you that this works everywhere and that this, this means no new towers ever again. But where this can be deployed instead of a tower, we're going to do this because it looks better, it's less expensive, it's much quicker, it, it's better for everybody. But, but also you probably wouldn't be allowed to put the tower in that area anyways. Um, in this particular area, I think there are several places we probably would be allowed as the federal law controls this, if there's a need to provide this service that the American public demands and this particular area is the best way to serve that need, then we have to put it there. We have the obligation to do the best we can to make it the least obtrusive <laughs> alternative. And I, this, to me, is a no-brainer. It's by far the least obtrusive alternative in this particular application. I, I can't tell you there will never be another tower again. Um, but this is what we're doing in, in dense areas right now, and it works well. Mr. Weaver? Um, I would just say um, millions of Americans have already made their choice, and if they weren't supportive of cell phone technology, they should not have one. Um, and therefore, you know, this is the infrastructure that's required to do that. Um, I think it's, it's good that it's small. I think you know, an applicant's done you know, a, a lot to address any concerns I might have. I might move that we um, close the hearing. Second? I have one. Oh, I have one question here. The way you've got your, uh, your AC-DC converter and your, uh, your fuse link and your uh, lightning arrestor, mm -hmm. okay, it says down here that they're from, it gives a varied uh, height to that. It says from 5, point, five to 8.5 feet. Uh, that's to the bottom of the meter. So the, the converters and all of our equipment is 10 feet above the ground. The meter is going to be placed how the utility company requires it, and that's simply because they can't read it. Can't it's read 10 it, feet yeah. But the, but the uh, ACDC converter and the, other, and the other units are at 10 feet? Yeah, if you look... It doesn't say, that, it doesn't say they're at 10 uh, feet. It does, if you look to the left of where you're seeing 5 to 8.5, um, all the way to the left, you'll see... 10 feet AGL bottom of equipment. Um, right here? Yep. That doesn't say. Okay. That particular one's 15. I'm looking at the other pole, which is 10, so that All one's right. going to be okay. even higher. All right. That's, that's my, that was my, <coughs> some kid with a baseball bat. Oh. You'd be out of business. Yeah, no, absolutely. And uh, that matters more to us than it does to you, probably, <coughs> and that's why we place it that way. Um, the meter itself, um, as you know, is built to withstand probably a nuclear blast. That's how the utility company does it, because it's got to be down low so that it can be read. Um, but yeah, we put our equipment up as high as we can to keep it away from the public. Most of them are red drive-by now. Are what? Most of the meters are red drive-by. Yeah, they use scanners now. Yep, that's true. Um, but I, in, I don't know that much about the technology, but I think they still have to be within some proximity. Um, and, you know, and I don't know why the utility company may require it to be lower. We don't have a whole lot of say in where the meter goes. Um, if, if they tell us, put it here, we're putting it here, just as with any other building. Uh, it's, n it's not our call. Okay. Jonathan? Make a motion to close the hearing. Second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Uh -huh. Aye. Aye. Uh, make a motion to approve the special permit application by cell phone. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed. those opposed? Mr. Brooks is opposed. So the vote being 4-1 passes 4-1. Any commission? Um, consistent with FCC regulations as yeah. you okay. okay. Right. So just the FCC. Uh, yeah, do you need me to remake the motion? Yes. Just right. to so make the 
motion to amend the motion <laughs> um, to approve the special permit application with the condition that it be consistent with all FCC guidelines. Second. Sure. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, thanks very much. All right, thank you. thank you. I'll have a decision drafted for the board to sign at their next meeting. Okay, thanks. Um, do you know what date that is? 26. 26. 26. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to turn it over to you. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, We're going to go back to the um, William Street. <coughs> Matt has some information. Thank you. So, uh, just to remind the folks here and the folks at home, this hearing is now closed. This is an internal discussion with the board and the administration. Um, <clears throat> just want to bring to everyone's attention how we got here, and, and some members were absent, so I just want to make sure I'm presenting this properly. So, <clears throat> plans were revised for this meeting in accordance with a meeting that was held at the Development Coordinating Group on March 4th. The DCG, uh, it's our department, heads, engineering, planning, water, sewer, fire, police, et cetera, <coughs> came up with a handful of uh, criteria for the applicant to meet. Those were to obtain all necessary permits and inspections from town departments. <coughs> the location of the existing septic systems which be shown in the plan to ensure they're not located within 150 feet of a well. The, it turns out that this is all sewer, so there aren't an existing septic. Uh, rooftop runoff and foundation drains included in the stormwater management system. This was shown on the new plan. Earth fill removal calculations shown on the plan and included in the application. That change was made also. Sewer work was performed by a licensed drain layer. That condition was listed on their plan. <coughs> Proposed address for the new dwelling must be shown on the plan. That was shown on the plan. And the physical display of the street address must be on the proposed building in accordance with the fire department's general bylaws, section 16.02. That was added to the plan. In addition to that, the plan does show, does conform with the, the Hammerhead Lot Special Permit Criteria, that being the dimensions, the, the consistency of the character of a Hammerhead Lot, the minimum square footage requirements, so on and so forth. I won't get too far into that. However, as kind of seems the way that the board is, is feeling towards this application, it is a special permit. It's subject to the requirements of Section 9.3, as, as Mr. Weaver pointed out. <coughs> Those findings are... 9351 I mentioned earlier, the degree to which the activity, site plan, and building design are consistent with surrounding development. Number two, capability of the town to serve the premises considering existing roads, town equipment, and other municipal services. Number three, the impact on town's educational facilities. Number four, consequences for adjoining premises of sound, light, odor, noise, or other disturbances. Number five, the degree to which the proposal results in air or water pollution topographical change, removal of mature trees or other botanical assets, removal cover of vegetation, risk for erosion or siltation, increased stormwater runoff from the site or displacement of natural habitats. Number six, site distance from and traffic safety at the entrance to town roads or other public ways. Number seven, I think this is one Mr. Brooks was looking for, environmental compatibility of proposal with the neighborhood character. Uh, number eight, employment and fiscal consequences. Number nine, the degree to which the proposed development is consistent with Auburn's revised master plan. <clears throat> this being said, if the board is leaning towards a direction for what, in my opinion, may be a vote uh, of denial, I would, I would ask that it provide town administration some time to ensure that the neighborhood is consistent with some of these detractors that the board is asking before we make a vote. And since we have 90 days, or the board has 90 days to do so, I recommend tabling the vote to the next meeting to give us some time to look into that, to make sure that the board's opinion is valid. Once again, well, is that enough time then? Yes. Okay. We have 90 days to do that. Mm -hmm. I, think it'll be, I think it'll be a valid time. Okay. I think two weeks would be... Pardon? Okay. I don't know what's the problem with that. No. Because I think 9351 <coughs> applies, 9355, the stormwater section, mm -hmm. and 9357, I believe, the environmental impact uh, or the neighborhood of the impact on the neighborhood. Okay. If it's okay with the board, I'd like to use those three as a guide when making my uh, inquiries. Yes. Okay. 
So the hearing's been closed. Mm -hmm. um, do we need a vote to continue to? No, nope. we'll just plan on discussing it at the April 26th mm -hmm. uh, meeting and taking the final vote at that time. Okay. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, we have some minutes to plow through. Um, I've got a few corrections, not much, but I'll just turn them over so that uh, the motion to approve the, I don't have 2-9, I have 2-23. That's a surprise, three, you, found, eight, you found a correction? Two twenty two. That's, that's a surprise, <laughs> isn't that a surprise? I wasn't surprised. <laughs> you know, after having done minutes for many, many years, Mr. Rafa, you know, you, you look at it with a critical eye. <laughs> Anyways, I'll, I'll entertain a motion for to approve the t meeting minutes from February 9th, 2016. Anyone? Make a motion to approve. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Uh, aye. <coughs> Motion to approve February 23rd, <coughs> meeting minutes. I'll make that motion. Looking for a second. Second. Any further discussion? Hold on. Uh, oh, you. Sorry, second. discussion. You can't second. That's correct. Um, I'll, I'll second. Okay. All right. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 And I'll give these to you. So Thank you. Give those two. Um, meeting minutes for March 8th. I'll make the motion to be approved. Second. Uh, second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 I abstain. Okay. Jim abstains. Right. And finally, March 22nd. Uh, make a motion to approve. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Uh, and I abstain. Yep. Two abstentions. Okay. No signatures. Board discussion. MDI grant. Yes. Matt, you're up. Thank you very much. So, just recently, we received grant approval. It's a state grant for technical assistance from the state for the Jury Square Village District proposal. And I know in the past we've been working with CMRPC on a draft bylaw. This is a piggyback of that. This, the purpose of the MDI grant, and it's a $10,000 technical assistant, we will be assigned a, we've already been set up with someone who's going to be providing assistance for us, and their job is to set up a Charette uh, vision workshop with the stakeholders, everyone who owns property in the area, to come up with some of the ideas towards building this village bylaw and collecting that information at the vision workshop and then producing it or adding it to our, our draft. Are there any tentative <coughs> dates? The uh, kickoff meeting is scheduled for April 28th, which is a Thursday. <coughs> and where is that? At 1 o'clock, and it'll be located in this room. Okay. Um, low impact development grant. <clears throat> Can I Johnson, just Mr. real Gaber. quick on that? Um, the, uh, this board and yourself have already done a lot of work mm -hmm. on um, the village uh, district bylaw. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, the charrette process. I, I get the concept of that. I think that's something that was supposed to be though included as mm -hmm. part of our CMRPC existing right. work. So my only comment or feedback would be, I think it'd be an added benefit to the town if we were able to work with the grant that we've just received mm -hmm. to have it add additional value rather than replicating something that right. we've already received mm -hmm. CMRPC grant hours to accomplish. So mm -hmm. is that negotiable in any yes. way? Yeah. Uh, okay. Our uh, 
technical assistance grant with CMRPC, they hadn't accomplished that part of it yet. So, uh, right. and the employee who had been helping us out just took a job as uh, planning director in, a, in the town of Ethel. Mm -hmm. So yeah. they stopped right at where it was time to do this. So timing just happens to work out where now the state can come in and give us this, cool. this assistance. So the hours for the TA on our behalf is once the state is done with theirs, we can use some of those hours with CMRPC to finalize the draft and possibly um, put it towards town. My recommendation would be not to do that, okay. and would instead be to um, hold CMRPC to that which they promised us, and to have their new person come in and mm -hmm. to conduct that part of it, because I feel like that okay. aligns closely with what CMRPC could do well. Okay. And then my suggestion would be to consider having, you know, seeing what the skill set is of this um, new grant and seeing if we couldn't mm -hmm. leverage that to do something that CMRPC isn't as strong at, um, mm. and be happy to participate in some conversations to that effect. Okay. And you know, how does the you know the the master plan update fit in with all of that as well? Yeah. Um, mm. You know, that might be an opportunity. Um, yeah, I agree. Bring that into it as well. Good information to bring forward at the 20th meeting with the representative. And find out if the grant money covers anything that they're going to do in this new project. Mm. Sure. Okay. I appreciate it. And that none of it comes out of the general fund. Right. Next. Okay. Um, Jeff Hall, Town Planning Commission. Um, I'm not sure where you're going. Oh, sorry. Yes. Yeah, so the Low Impact Development Grant. As you can tell, we have a handful of grants yes. that we're working on collectively. So, Low Impact Development Technical Assistance we, get, we received from Mass Audubon and CMRPC is having their meeting on next week, April 19th, with a meeting with the Zoning Bylaw Review Committee to provide some of the updates that they've made to our Open Space Residential Development Bylaw, our Planning Board Subdivision Rules and Regulations, and promote those to the Bylaw Review Committee for feedback, and that information can then be taken forward as updates to our board. Okay, and that's on April 19th, you said? And where is that be help being held? 7 p.m. in this room. Okay. Master Plan Committee update. I may defer to our Master Plan Committee delegate. <laughs> well, we've each um, uh, taken a piece of the Master Plan reviewing for um, areas where we can update identifying stakeholders and also, um, you know, trying to identify things that we feel are um, missing since the last um, update of the uh, master plan. So um, we've each, we're each taking a stab at a particular section that we, you know, feel we have kind of an expertise in and uh, that's where we are. Furthermore, uh, we've gone through, and I think you've alluded to this, but we've gone through the recommendations, crossed off the ones that we've accomplished so far, and as uh, different members of the board will be reaching out to town administration to continue to collect updates so we can update the document. Yeah. It's Keep not going to happen overnight, but <clears throat> no, a lot of work. continue to update us since it is a um, subsidiary board to this board. We'll continue to update. Okay, and the zoning bylaw review, finally. Hmm? And to the chair, I already mm -hmm. mentioned that they are meeting next week with the Low Impact Development Committee. Um, <coughs> regarding their primary focus right now being the RMD uh, bylaw that we're hoping to get in front of the town meeting before the expiration of the moratorium, I had provided some information that I thought would be of interest to the planning board. Number one being that the town of Grafton was recently in the telegram for a facility that showed up in town because uh, the town didn't have any bylaws or uh, regulations Design to govern it. or anything in right. place. When so is that moratorium over? Ours expires October 27th of this year. So the Zoning Bylaw Review Committee is hammering out uh, different aspects of the track bylaw that we've all seen um, with urgency to get to get something in front of town meeting or up, oh, sorry, this board and a public hearing before town meeting uh, in advance of that in deadline. May. We need to, uh, well, not for a town meeting in May, because 
way we've already been set, but there's still some adjustments to make. May have to hold a special town meeting, not sure yet. But in speak, uh, we need further clarification from the AG if the waiting period from a fall town meeting, if there's three months before they get to the review, we need to know if we're susceptible to growth in that time. Even though we say passed it at town meeting, there's still a review period, and if our moratorium is expired during that window, are we open mm -hmm. to something coming in? Despite having passed it, you're going to get an opinion on yeah, that. Yeah, and that's one of the things we're and working on. And it seems on, so. to be moving at a, at a much quicker pace. Right. Um, Worcester's approved a couple now, and mm -hmm. Grafton's going to, and Shrewsbury, and so mm -hmm. it's something that needs to be, uh, we need to get it in place. Right. And just as an example, um, the board so far has made a declaration to limit it to one facility, whether it's cultivation or retail in town, and they've doubled the buffer zone from schools, uh, areas where children congregate from 500 feet to 1,000 feet. That's they've also, the federal limit anyway. Yes. Yeah. And they've also uh, added a 250-foot residential buffer zone to all uh, applicable zoning districts, uh, industrial zoning districts. And right now, uh, they're trying yet to determine which zoning district fits best. And we met with the DCG <coughs> this at uh, the tail end of March and made a recommendation for an area in town that isn't in the aquifer, doesn't have any of the areas where children congregate. It seems to be the Melbury Street Technology Drive area. Um, that's going to be in front of them next meeting to discuss uh, as, as possible zoning area. That's my backyard. That's my backyard. Yeah, that's the. Uh, I, I told you I'll file suit with the U.S. Attorney. Yeah, the um, for the, and I, I know you Paul's mentioned at, at our hearings with the federal law being one way and the state being the other, we also located some language in the recommendations from the state that say the planning board cannot uh, prohibit the use and cite federal law. So uh, it's one of the things we can't do as a board and say we, we're going to prohibit these facilities because it's illegal federally. And that it, was in it, the it, guidance, correct? The municipal guidance? It expressly lists that as one of the things. That would have to do. be done individually. That, right. That wouldn't be right. yeah. out of the board. So. I just wanted to give the, everyone an update on, on where that's at. It's going to be coming to us in the form of a public hearing <coughs> in the future as well. What date is the year up? October uh, 27. October. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so <coughs> next meeting is April 26th. Stupid. Yes. Anything else? These wacky things are going to be a wacky lead. I don't think mm -hmm. so. Shoot the Detain a motion for adjournment. I'll make that motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.